the early days of NASCAR saw an unusual cast of characters putting their mark on the sport. In a time of growth and innovation, you never knew what you would see at the racetrack. I was racing with Ted Scherzer in Atlanta with my Hudson Hornet, and he walked up and said, Tim, I've got an African monkey in a cage at my home. Why, why can't you let him ride in my Hudson Hornet? I said, well, Ted, you're the owner of the car. I'm just a driver. But I said, Ted, I don't think NASCAR will let a live animal ride in the car. He said, well, we're not going to let them know this. His name was Jocko Flacco. Ted Chester named him Jocko Flacco after us. We run full seats back then. He said, I'm going to have a perch built in the passenger side. We're going to have two belts, safety belts, but we're going to tie him in one of these two little belts, and he can look out the winner. And by the way, I'm going to have a little cloth helmet fixed for him and a little uniform with his name on it, which Ted did. Jocko became Tim's co-pilot in the 1953 season, riding along with him in races throughout the Southeast and even making it to Ohio. I'll never forget how much trouble we went through trying to hide Jocko in the infield. And man, when they throw the flag, I'm going down the backstretch doing the race. Here's a monkey sitting in the passenger side. And you know, it's real close because the driver's sitting on in the other cars. Here's a monkey grinning at them. And they'd almost run into the wall. And would you believe that monkey would laugh at them and cut up and wave at them? <laughs> he run in eight races with me. And that's car didn't say a word. Over those eight races, Tim and Jocko led 158 laps and had five top five finishes. And with Jocko's monkey business distracting other drivers, Tim and Jocko led their number 91 Hudson Hornet to victory lane at Hickory Motor Speedway, beating out the likes of Herb Thomas, Buck Baker, and Lee Petty. The funny part about this whole story, and it's a true story, I was running the mile track at Raleigh, and I was in that race with Jocko and the Hudson Hornet. Funny was leading the race. Speedy Thompson was running third, and about halfway of the race, somehow Jocko had got out under two belts. I had a floorboard in my Hudson Hornet with hinges on it. Jocko had seen me pull that chain on the straightaways where I could see if a white streak come in the tire, it meant you better come in within two laps or you're gonna blow that tire and hit the rail. And I think a pebble come through that crack off of the track. And he comes screaming up in the car and got up on, you ever heard of a monkey on your back? I literally had a monkey on my back and he was screaming. So I come around and come in the pits and grabbed Jocko and pulled in the pits and handed him to a pit crew, caught second gear and went out. Speedy Thompson got by me and by stopping and putting Jocko out, it cost me $750 because that was the difference between second and third. But it's the only time in NASCAR history that a Grand National car had to come in the pits to put a live monkey out. Jocko Flacco was not just the first and only co-pilot in NASCAR history, he's also the only monkey to ever win a NASCAR race so far.